106. If you paid attention this week, you know that Jesus is coming soon. We're in the 12th hour, kids. Right out <coughs>
got a song on your heart this morning? Stable, he's your friend. Uh-huh. When your friend lay 
sins. I'm glad he's able to keep us in his righteousness. I'm glad that my God, nothing is too hard for God. Turn in your Bibles uh, to Psalms uh, chapter number 40. Yes, sir, by all means. I can hear a distant cry shouting out the time is nigh. When the father tells his son, work on earth, this day is done. Son, go bring my children home, for I want them gathered round my throne. It's time to reap the harvest you have sown. Son, go bring my children home. What a joy to see his face. In his arms we will embrace, never more we'll have to roam, cause we finally made it home. Son, go bring my children home, for I want them gathered round my throne. It's time to reap the harvest you have sown. Son, go bring my children home. And this is just my thinking, but when if Heavenly Father tells him to go bring him, he's going to say, I'll be back in just a minute. Amen. Amen. That's the day we're looking for, ain't it, church? Amen. Turn in your Bibles this morning to Psalms uh, chapter number 40. Psalms chapter 40. The other, the other night while the preacher was preaching on the woman that was caught in adultery, for some reason, uh, right smack dab in the middle of that message, God put this uh, scripture on my heart and put this on my heart and had to stop for a minute and jot down a few notes because if I don't, uh, I ain't got enough sense to remember them, so uh, I've got to act quick before it leaves my mind. But the Lord put this thought... Uh, on my heart, and uh, I just want to try to give you what the Lord give me. Psalms chapter number 40. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. You can be seated. As God gave me this thought, I, I, was, uh, I was talking to Brother uh, uh, David Crow, and we was riding around that day, and I said, Brother God, this uh, lets things happen in my life. Uh, I, sometimes I feel like just to give me a message. I said, Brother, even things uh, 
uh, back before I was even uh, uh, called to preach, there was things happened in my life and, and things that went on that now God lets me go back and, and preach uh, from these incidences, and that's, that's really the only way that I know uh, how to preach. So God had put this on my heart, and I want to give it to you uh, just like that God gave it to me. Uh, y'all know I love to play golf, and me and uh, David and Tanner and, and Mason and Riley went up to Mount Mitchell Golf Course, and I played there uh, several times uh, before this, and it's a beautiful golf course, and I'd got to know where everything's at, kind of, and, and, and how to play the course, and uh, uh, Kim does, doesn't care anything about uh, going and playing golf, but she loves, I got a little old stick, it extends out, and you can dig around in the bushes and you can find golf balls. So uh, the whole time I'm playing, uh, and, and anybody that knows how to play golf knows that you got to kind of keep a pace going. You can't just hold up the game. So the whole time that she's doing this, I'm glad that she goes with me, but the whole time I'm a fussing Andrew saying, Kim, come on. Sometimes I've even left her and went and played two or three holes and, and come back and get her because she holds the game up. She'll just, um, uh, she ain't never been one to go off in the woods or even like hiking or nothing like that, but uh, she loves doing that. Sometimes she'll find uh, two dozen golf balls in, in one day, save me a whole lot of money. I'm thinking, it's expensive, but uh, uh, Chris, I'll be out there playing and looking, and she'll be gone. My Lord, she'll be off in a old laurel thicket somewhere that I wouldn't dare want to go off in. She'll be down there in her dress clothes, uh, uh, thrashing around, uh, digging out golf balls. And sometimes, brother, like I said, I'll just leave her and go on and have to come back. I think Dave went back and got her one day. I said, I ain't going back. She said, I've told her all day, you can go pick her back up. So I think Dave and Nova went back down there and got her and brung her back. But anyway, we're up here... Uh, uh, we're up here playing at uh, at Mount Mitchell, and uh, we're going out through Iron She's uh, getting golf balls everywhere. Man, this place is covered. I like going to them golf courses where the rich people play because uh, they play with real expensive golf balls, uh, and, and they don't go look for them when they hit them in the woods. So uh, that's the better places to get to go play. So uh, she's over there gathering these up, and uh, we start down this fairway, and uh, there's a little old creek that runs through her, and I seen her heading that way. I said, do not go over there. Uh, near that creek. I said, it's swampy. Well, she didn't listen to me and she went over there. Anyway, Jeremiah, she was over there uh, messing around and uh, she said, I see three or four right there. And I was coming past her to go get my ball to hit it. And I said, Kim, leave those alone. Don't try to get those. I said, it's too swampy and marshy. And as I went by, she said, well, it don't look marshy to me. So, Dell, I went on out through there uh, 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 to get to my golf ball, Louie, and I, I was sitting there figuring out what club I was, I was going to use, and then all of a sudden, I hear her screaming my name. I didn't have to turn around and look. I knew who it was because I knew her voice. Ain't you glad that God knows your voice this morning? I'm glad when I get in my prayer closet, Lord, and I call out to him, God don't have to sit up there scratching his head, Andrew, uh, wondering who that is. He don't get up there and say, well, that sounds like Heath, or, or, or is that Stephen? Or is that? I'm glad that he knows my voice, and I'm glad that I know his voice too, amen. But I tell you what, as soon as I heard her call my name, I knew it wasn't Riley. I knew it wasn't David. I know it wasn't Tanner. I know it was Kim. And by the sound of her voice, uh, I knew that she was in trouble. I'm glad when I call out to God and I'm in trouble, I'm glad that he knows where I'm at. Uh, he knows my voice and he knows the situation uh, that I'm in. And before I even turned around, Tanner, I knew what the situation was. I knew what I was going to see. I had warned her uh, not to get off in there and I could tell uh, by my warning uh, that she wasn't going to take heed. Uh, she wasn't listen to what I had to say. And when I turned around and looked, all I could see was the top of her head uh, down there in that swamp. Uh, you know why I preach like I do, church? Uh, uh, you know why I get up here and expound on the Word of God and send you the warnings? And might so many times I'll leave here 
just saying uh, they didn't get it. Amen. Uh, they didn't take heed to that. You say, well, how do you know uh, we're still sitting here on a church pew? I can just tell as a pastor uh, when they say, oh, Lordy, uh, our preacher's preached a warning. I can tell he means business. Uh, we sure don't want to do that. And sometimes you can send the warning to people and you can tell that they're not paying you any attention. Uh, she didn't pay me any attention and I knew when I heard her voice uh, what the situation was. So I went over there and I didn't do this like Jesus does. But I mean it wasn't real critical to start with. It got more critical as the situation went on. Ain't that the way it is in sin? Ain't that the way it is when it ain't always just talking about this old uh, dirty rotten sin. Disobeying God is sin. He said obedience is better than sacrifice. You've always heard the saying, an ounce of prevention's worth more than a pound of cure. I give her the warning, uh, she didn't heed to it, and now she's found herself in a mess. But I didn't handle this like a Christian or even like Jesus would. She was a hollering and a screaming, Heath, come help me. Come help me. And I could see her trying to push herself up, but she couldn't. Her hands would just go out of sight in the mud. Uh, she was in a helpless situation. Uh, so me being the great and good husband uh, that I had, I went running over there to help her out of that mud. No, I didn't. <laughs> she was a screaming, and I was running the other way. Where was you going, brother? To get my cell phone. Get my cell phone. She was hollering, come back, come back. And I said, I'll be back in a minute, honey. Don't disappear. I ran over there and I got my cell phone marked. And oh, she was getting mad then. I was sitting there taking selfies. Or not selfies. I was taking pictures of her down in there. Uh, you know what I was wanting that for? I was wanting it for evidence. I was wanting it for evidence. And I've showed that picture a hundred times since then. You tell that story. And people don't get the whole gist of it till they see the picture, amen. And then they're like, wow, brother, uh, you wasn't kidding. I mean, she was up to, she was up to her thighs in the mud. Uh, then she fell back on her back and she couldn't push herself up. And all of a sudden she's laying there and I'm thinking it's kind of funny. I'm still taking the pictures and I'm sitting there saying, I told you so. I told you so. And she says, well, get me out of here. I said, in order for me to get you out of here, I said, now I've got to get down in here in this mud. I had on brand new Nike golf shoes. I didn't want to get them dirty and I was trying to stretch and reach but I couldn't do it Stephen uh, finally I had to get down in that old muck and mire and get her out and all because uh, she didn't heed to my warning uh, she was covered up in a mess and I was covered up in a mess it interrupted my game it interrupted the play and it got the filth on me and I was kind of aggravated about that but you know what when I was down in a miry pit of sin and in a dark heart horrible pit. And when I called out to Jesus, amen, uh, he didn't run to get the cell phone uh, to get some pictures of the evidence that I was in. Uh, he didn't mind a bit, amen, uh, to get down in that miry pit and pull me out. Uh, the Bible said it was a horrible pit, amen. Sometimes I think we forget that. I think we forget that. We forget really, Pam, where Jesus brought us from. I mean, everything's good now. The Lord saved us. He's cleaned us up. He's pulled us out of that horrible pit. Man, everything's going right. Revivals are going on. And if we ain't very careful, uh, we'll forget how horrible it was. Uh, we'll forget how bad the conviction was. Uh, we'll forget how bad a state our life was in. Uh, God help us not to revert to that. But God help us never uh, to forget where God brought us out of. Hey, you was in that pit. I was in that pit. Uh, we was just as helpless as she was. Uh, she couldn't get out of there if her life depended on it. I couldn't get out of the shape I was in. Uh, you couldn't get out of the shape you was in. Uh, but thank God, like David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. Amen. And he was inclined uh, to hear me. You know what that inclined means? It means to lean toward or do by habit. I'm glad that when I cry out to Jesus, amen, it's a habit of his, amen, uh, that he runs to his children. Amen. Thank God my Savior is inclined uh, to come to my cry when I call out to him. But the little funny situation got a little more in depth 
As Riley began to holler out, she said, oh, no, Mom. Uh, she said, there's a snake coming down that creek, and it's headed right for you. And, man, she began to panic then. Hey, man, sometimes uh, we'll be in that old pit, and it, we might, some, uh, I believe some Christians love the pit. Amen. Amen. It's just like a brother preached last night. He said, there's a lot of goats in the church house. He said, but there's going to be a day that God's going to separate uh, the sheep from the goat. And Matt says a quote that Hanley Milby says all the time. He said, sheep want sheep food, amen. And goats will eat anything. But I believe I've seen some folks in the church house, uh, they get in the mud, Andrew, and they're content to wallow in there. They ain't even trying to get out. Uh, they kind of like it. Praise God. I don't want mud on me. I don't want dirt on me. I don't want sin on me. Uh, when Jesus pulled me out of that pit, I don't want him to go where near it. Amen. Amen. But all of a sudden, here come the snake. And the situation got worse. So I had to just step off in there and get her out of there. I had to dig her shoes out. Had to get her up on the bank. I had mud all over me. Thank goodness there wasn't hardly nobody on the golf course. We was about the last group to go through. Got her out there and got her established back on solid ground. I could have left her right there and said, you made this mess. You look awful. Or you're covered in mud. And I did say, I said, I don't know what we're going to do, but there's no way you're getting in my vehicle like that. She said, well, what am I going to do? I said, I don't know. It ain't my problem. I said, I didn't jump in there for a $2 golf ball. Do you know what? The Lord has every right in the world to say that to us. When we get in them messes. We're like, Lord, will you get me out of this mess? Lord, will you help my family? Lord, will you help my finances? Lord, will you do this for me and do that for me? And I'd say nine out of ten times, he has every right in the world to look down to Hannah and say, you got your own self in this mess. You get yourself out. I warned you through the word, through the preaching, uh, you're here right now. So there you go. Uh, you've heeded to the temptation. Now you see yourself. But ain't you glad Jesus ain't like us? Ain't you glad Jesus ain't like us? Then I looked at her. Bless your heart. She looked pitiful covered in. I said, come on, we'll go get you some more. We'll go get, get you cleaned up. She said, I guess I'll have to go up there at the clubhouse and use that water hose and wash off. And I thought, boy, how embarrassing that'd be. It'd have been embarrassing to me. I have to go up there, take my wife up there in her nice clothes, hair all fixed up, looking pretty. I'm all in my golf stuff. And we're up there looking like a bunch of rednecks covered in mud at, a go at the most expensive golf uh, course around. And I'm up here hosing my wife down with a water hose in front of everybody. I wasn't looking forward to that. It's going to make a spectacle out of her and out of me. And really, that's where I got my thought, Duck. That's what them men that brought that woman to Jesus that day, caught in the very act of adultery, they wanted to make a spectacle out of her. They wanted to show her off in front of all them men and folks. Look what she's done. Look at the filth she's in. Look how dirty and rotten she is. But it didn't work with Jesus. Because he don't think and act like me and you think. He looked at her with love. He looked at her with compassion. And he said, ma'am, if you'll just stand right here. He said, I'm about to clean you up and make you look like brand new. I didn't take my wife up there in front of everybody and make a spectacle out of her. Because she didn't listen to what I said. I took her all the way across the golf course. And there's a nice little place to get down in the river. And I got down in there. And she got down in there. And she ha we had some clothes in the car. I went and got them. I come down to the creek. Thank goodness there wasn't nobody around. And she had to get down there and basically uh, take a bath. But she got cleaned up. But you know what? After she got down in there and got the muck and the mire off of her. And I helped her back out of that creek and got her established. He said he pulled me out of that miry pit. I set my feet on a solid foundation. You know what that foundation is? It says a rock. Uh, you know who the rock is? Uh, the rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, he's the cornerstone uh, that the builders rejected. Amen. Uh, 
that he's my savior. He's my soon coming king. Uh, he is the he is the foundation of my belief. And he said he found he put the, my feet on a rock, and that is Jesus Christ. They said the rock that followed them in the wilderness, uh, that spiritual rock uh, that you drunk from over in Corinthians ten. It said that rock is, hey man, capital R O C K is capital C H R I S T Christ. Uh, the rock is Christ Jesus. I'm glad when he pulled me out of the miry pit, uh, Stephen, that he didn't embarrass me. He didn't take no photos uh, to bring my past back up, uh, but he cleaned me up and set my feet on a solid foundation. Uh, that is Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Amen. I took him down there, got her a new change of clothes. I'm looking to see if that hit anybody. <laughs> Boy, when I was wallowing in that old pit, I stained in sin, boy. I stained in sin. You could probably smell it on me. I could have wiped it off, but it had just smeared. I could have got around and wiped that off. All I was going to do, Stephen, smear that much. But thank God, we had a change of clothes. <laughs> thank God, when Jesus cleaned me up, Dad, and set my feet on a solid foundation, he'd give me a new garment. It wasn't from Target, and it wasn't from Walmart, and it wasn't from a store down the road. It was a robe of righteousness, amen, that only Jesus Christ can give those uh, that come uh, to repentance. Hey, hey, but when I, when I put that robe on, uh, no longer did I smell like sin. Uh, no longer did I look like sin. And no longer did I have a past anymore. Uh, my past is on uh, the other side of Calvary this morning, uh, thanks to Jesus Christ and the work that he done on Calvary. And just like him, uh, when she come up out of there uh, with the being washed and her new clothes on, anybody out there on the golf course, Scott, that I never knowed uh, what she looked like uh, 10 minutes before. I'm glad, amen, when Jesus saved me, amen, uh, that he changed me and he closed me and I no longer look or act like what I used to before. And the world can know, but Jesus don't know. And when God looks on me, he don't see me for myself, but he sees me as a son. And I'm heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus this morning. And that's what the Lord has done for you. And if you're not saved this morning, or if you've been saved and you've backslid and you're not where you are to be with God, you know what the Lord wants to do for you this morning? He wants to pull you up out of that horrible pit. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. He wants to love you. He wants to clean you up. He wants to get you established. He wants to get you headed in the right direction. He wants to wash you white as snow. He wants to put a new garment on you. And he wants you to walk with him. And he's able this morning. And I promise you, all your past and all your sins will be forgiven. If you'll just ask him, Diane, come to the piano. I'm done. Every head bowed and every eye closed as she plays some softly. On the piano. Hey, somebody sitting here this morning. You're not exactly where you are to be with God. You're wanting out and you're trying to do better. And you're trying to get yourself out. And every time you're like, Kim, wasn't that much. You'd go to push your hand down. To raise yourself up. But there was no firm ground. She just kept getting deeper and deeper and dirtier in the situation that she was in. Till she called out for help. Help's here this morning. And I want to ask you. If this is speaking to you this morning. If you want Jesus to clean you up. If you want Jesus to renew that joy you had once. Would you step out and come pray? Hey, some young folks I'm preaching to this morning, and I could come put my hands on you if you would just submit and come to the altar and say, Lord, would you restore unto me the joy that I once had? Uh, Lord, I'm getting off in the pit again, Lord, and I need your help. I was speaking to somebody. Would you come? Would you come pray? God wants to clean you up, wash you up, get you established. Bless you, young man. Bless you, young man, Stephen. 
Jesus loves you. He didn't send this message this way this morning for me to point fingers at you or to condemn you. He sent this message because He loves you. And He wants the very best for you. How long has it been since you felt like praising Jesus? How long has it been since you felt the Holy Ghost on you? You can have it. You say, well, brother, I'll be faithful a few more services. I'll do Right now is the time. He's calling to you. He wants you back. He wants to help you. Somebody else needs to come pray. Do you want back what you had? It's waiting here for you. Can you imagine if I'd have waded off in that mud, got my shoes dirty, and stuck my hand down to my wife, and she said, I don't want your help. Go on. That's what you're doing this morning. Jesus is extending his hand to help you and get you back on track where you need to be. He's holding his hand out. You're going to accept it or you're going to reject it. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus and there's none in me either. We all need to get closer. Do you want to pray? If you won't come, would you at least raise your hand and say, Preacher, would you pray for me? I won't come to you. It won't embarrass you. Nothing. I'll just pray for you. Pray, God bless that hand. Preacher, I ain't as close to God as I want to be. Would somebody else raise their hand? God bless that hand. God bless that hand. There's hands going up. I told you I wouldn't come to you, and I won't. But let me just beg you for a minute. They some that sit here, and you've raised your hand time and time again, and you've not made the move. You better come on and pray while God's dealing with your heart. Because if you keep turning that away, uh, there might be a day that God don't deal with your heart, and you won't be able to raise your hand, and it'll be too late. Why don't you just slip out and come pray? Oh, there ain't no shame in it. Uh, you'll be so glad you did. And let us pray with you. And you'll feel the sweet Holy Spirit. I love you up and clean you up. And give you what you lack this morning. Would you please come and pray? Would you please come and pray? If you don't want to come by yourself. Grab somebody by the hand. And say let's go pray together. Amen. Would you please? Would you please come? Christians praying. God's got exactly what you need. He's got the answer for your situation. You say, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. You're right, I don't, but he does. Would you come pray? Appreciate you coming, brother. I was going to say, I hope you got what you needed, but I know you got what you needed. Amen. You'll never come to Jesus and him not have what you need. Amen. If you come with the right spirit and the right attitude. Thank the Lord for that. Anybody, anything on your heart before we dismiss? All right. A few ladies are going to be going to the...